coming to you from Scottsdale Community College. I'm Ashley Neville and it's time to go inside Maricopa Sports. On this edition of Inside Maricopa Sports, we'll talk to Phoenix College football coach Dan Cazetto about rebuilding a competitive football team. In Coach's Corner, we sit down with South Mountain Community College men's golf coach Andy Walker, and we'll learn all about SEC's Karate Club. But let's begin with the GCC and SEC volleyball teams. I caught up with both teams to find out what it took for them to stay the best in their neck and neck battle against each other all season long. The SEC and GCC volleyball teams have been battling all season long to remain at the top of the Arizona Community College Athletic Conference, which hasn't been easy. And for GCC head coach Lisa Stuck, it wasn't expected either. It's not something we were expecting to have happen. We're happy that we're, that we're there and we're happy we're playing at our home court. And I, I think for us, um, we have really great leadership from our sophomore class that was what kind of went through it last year. The Gauchos were number one in the ACC AC all season with a 29 and two overall record, but they weren't paying much attention to the standings. You know, really, no one ever thought that we were like on top, you know? We always thought one game at a time, one game at a time, we weren't even thinking about our record. Building off of last year's national title victory, GCC has had that same winning mentality this season. We try to keep things in perspective and we've worked real hard to keep the kids grounded on the things they should be focusing on and it's not all the external stuff that's going on around them and what people are saying. It's more about what we're doing and how we're preparing. Part of that preparation is what the team does off the court. I always go home after a match or after a practice and list the things I did wrong and how I need to make them better. And my parents always, you know, tell me what I need to work on and stuff like that. So it's good to keep me in check. The Scottsdale Community College Artichokes also maintain a level of excellence this season with a 23 and six overall record. They were the only team that was able to beat GCC and they did it twice. Even if they weren't the defending champions, Lisa Stock is a friend of mine and she's an amazing volleyball coach. Her teams are always very disciplined. So it is always a battle between us. And when we walk away with a victory, I always feel really good about it. For her players, beating the defending national champions was a pretty big deal. Honestly, it was probably the best feeling I've ever felt in a long time. I mean, I think with that game, everyone wanted to win. Everyone had the mentality to win. Everyone was in it. It was just all of us were just, we came together the most as a team. The one loss in the regular season and the other in the playoffs did not stop GCC from playing their best. See, I don't think it really knocked us off track. I think it's a good thing to experience for every team to have so you know how to play in those kind of situations. Um, so I think it was a good thing for us and just no, like made us work harder. The Gauchos were too much to handle in the Region 1 Division 2 playoffs. They captured that title and will advance to the national tournament once again. Congrats to both teams on successful seasons. On the flip side, a team that hasn't seen a winning season in over two years is the Phoenix College men's football team. Kevin Hunt talks with head coach Dan Cazetto about the challenges of building a competitive football team and how he keeps his team alive through adversity. When the Phoenix College football team took the field, it was obvious they gave their best effort. Unfortunately, effort isn't always enough. The Bears suffered their second straight winless season, but there's reason for optimism. It was the first year for coach Dan Cosetto, whose impressive resume includes assistant jobs at ASU, Washington, Cal, and the San Francisco 49ers. When he was hired, it was too late to put together his own recruiting class. That changes next season. But the bottom line, Kevin, when it comes down to it, is recruiting. Every place I've ever been, it comes down to recruiting. And we haven't recruited. I got hired late. Robin got hired late and by the time the national signing date was gone and so the, the majority of these players and God love them the ones that have stuck it out ha, have busted their butt but we got to get better players. Cosetto has an impressive staff that should be able to upgrade the talent but before beginning the process. First I had to get over this season uh, to be 0 and 8 uh, for the first time in my career in 30, 35 plus years of doing this it was quite a challenge or maybe you could put it better uh, it was an adventure. It was a rocky adventure indeed but there were positive signs throughout the season. They went toe to toe with the third ranked Juco team in the country, Snow College, but the defense couldn't stop Snow in the fourth quarter. The Bears offense was the bright spot. Gozetto gives much of the credit to assistant head coach and offensive coordinator Robin Flugrad, who was on the ASU staff with Gozetto. 
Phoenix College scored 30 points per game and ranked sixth in the country passing yards per game. Above all, Cazetto has introduced structure and discipline. It wasn't just all of a sudden we're just going to show up on show up on the field and just practice. There was a purpose for every practice. Every day that we practice is labeled a certain day. We have Tell the Truth Monday. So whatever happened on Saturday, it's going to be revealed on Monday during the meeting. We have Competition Tuesday, so we're going to have competitive drills. We have Turnover Wednesday. The game of football, it's all based around how well you take care of the football and how well you take the football away from the opponent. That is the one area they will really need to concentrate on next season. Each practice day leads to Turn It Loose Saturday. Gazzetto started his career at a JUCO and came to Phoenix College to give back for some of the good fortune he's had in his career. He's determined to build a winner. I can't thank him enough for the opportunity and I'm gonna do the best job that I can. I'm Kevin Hunt for Inside Maricopa Sports. The PC football program has a bright future ahead, but how long it will take to build remains a mystery. Next on Inside Maricopa Sports, SMCC men's golf coach joins me on Coach's Corner. Welcome to Coach's Corner. I'm Ashley Neville, sitting alongside South Mountain Community College men's golf coach Andy Walker. You led your team to a national title last season. What did that mean for you as a coach and for the program? Um, as a coach, it was, it was great. It was one of the greatest feelings um, I've ever had in the game. Um, being able to recruit players and get them ready and uh, have players that struggled early play great late. Um, you know, get everybody to, to buy into a, um, a, a, the team concept of what we're, what we're trying to do there at South was, was unbelievable and, and the culmination was obviously a national title. For the, for the program itself, I think it really shows the culture that's been created at South Mountain and, um, and particularly the men's golf team and, uh, and a culture of winning. Um, it's going to help obviously with recruiting for, for future classes. But, um, but you know, I feel, I feel so great for the guys that, that came in to have one of their biggest experiences and for me to be a, a part of that. You also won the Dave Williams National Coach of the Year Award. What did that award mean for you and how did it impact you? Um, it, it meant a lot. I was, I was pretty surprised when I got it. Um, I thought I had a good chance once we won, but I wasn't really thinking about it too much. It was more of a, a team award uh, than, than anything. Um, without, without the guys that I had and the way they played, I don't get that award. So. You know, it meant a lot. One of my good friends um, played at University of Houston for Coach Williams. So when in how he talks about that coach for me to be mentioned in the same breath as him, uh, you know, means a lot. And it, and it means that I was recognized by my peers in the Golf Coaches Association of America. So, um, you know, it's something that, that I cherish dearly. This season, you guys are picking up from where you left off last season and are playing exceptionally well, having some of the best individual performances in program history. How have you been able to have such success so far this season? You know what, the guys came in um, knowing that we're national champions and knowing that what it takes to, to become a national champion. So although we lost a couple pieces from last year's team and, and John Souza and Ben Harden who are, who are playing really well at the D1 level right now, um, the, the younger guys saw what they did. And, um, and, and, the, and our sophomores that came back have been great leaders on and off the golf course. And, and know that the steps that we took to, to win the national title are going to help them not only in their individual performances but also as a team overall. So you know what, I got a great group of kids and, and they bought into my system and so when we work, we work to get better and we prepare with the culmination being the national championship and so far we've had some, some great success. You played on the PGA Tour for a year, um, what was that experience like for you? Um, it, it was awesome. I mean, obviously it's the highest level of golf there is and getting to play against the best players ever. Um, you know, I had a chance to play against some of the kids that I, or some of the guys that I grew up uh, idolizing as a kid. So to be on that stage was great. Um, I think all of those experiences from high school golf to college golf to the pro tour um, allows me to be a, a good coach. And it gives me experiences that the kids can look up to and respect because they know I've been there. And they know when, when something goes wrong, um, something went wrong with me as well when we were playing and I know how to handle it and when they're playing well um, at the same time we're not going to get over excited because I've been there as well and, um, and I can help them through those moments. You also were on a national championship team when you were playing. Kind of talk to me about that and what was that experience like for you? Um, it was great. It was 1997 uh, national championship team at, at Pepperdine University. Um, I had a great week with a great group of guys. Um, one of them I spoke to this morning over text. He's playing on the PGA Tour down in Mexico, um, Jason Gore. 
And um, so, so being able to talk to those guys and still have those relationships are great. Um, but I, to be honest, it felt better winning as a coach. How are you going to take, you know, everything that you did last year and bring it into this season? You know, um, I, I kind of live by if it's not broke, don't fix it. And so we're going to do a lot of the same things we did, but we have some new pieces. So we've got to, you know, mold uh, a, a new brand of player into kind of the style that, that we like to go out and play. But, you know, nothing beats hard work and preparation. So the more that we're doing the right things and, and continuing to focus on, on short game and game planning and, and knowing our, our golf IQs on the golf course, um, you know, I, I think these kids are going to ha give themselves another chance at a national title. What are some of the biggest differences between playing and coaching? Um, I don't get to hit the golf shots. You know, that's the biggest thing. Although I do have an influence on the golf shots with the kids that we're coaching, um, helping them game plan, helping them pick, you know, different golf clubs and, and learning about themselves in situations. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, I've got to go ahead and, and, and kind of give up control a little bit to the kids once we're out there and just know they're going to do the right things. When you're playing, you control all the elements. You know how you feel. Um, as a coach, you've got to, you know, try and understand how other kids are feeling in the same situations. What are some of the biggest things that you've learned from your players? That, that they're pretty good, that this new generation is a lot better than I was. And, um, you know, I had my time and right now they're, they're going to have their time out there doing their, uh, doing their thing. Um, there's so many different styles of, of, of play. We have very conservative players and we have very aggressive players and I have guys that bomb it and I have guys with great short games and I have guys with good imagination and I have some fiery players and I have some subdued players. And so there's so many different types of players um, that, you know what, there is no correct style of playing golf. You know, whoever gets it in the hole the quickest that week wins. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me. Congratulations on the national title win, and good luck to you guys the rest of the season. Thanks for having me, Ashley. It's just amazing the kind of superior talent that Walker continues to recruit. The spring season should be a good one. Next on Inside Maricopa Sports, SEC has an American Kempo Karate Club devoted to teaching a level of self-confidence and discipline. Kevin Hunt finds out more. Our vice president said, hey, you ought to start a club, and I'm like, They'll let me do that? Yes, and they will. Scottsdale Community College was happy to have their manager of IT services, Curtis Kipp, teach self-defense to any student interested. He formed the club almost five years ago. Joining us for this demonstration is club president, Nicholas Cree. Curtis teaches American Kenpo Karate. The goal of Kenpo is to end a fight as quickly and efficiently as possible. This isn't like the movies. <laughs> The idea here is not speed. I need to wait for him to react. Go. I want to stop him right there, okay? What I want to do is I want to stop just off center line. Here, here, bam, here. Bam. Like the sound effects. You'll need to provide your own sound effects, but come prepared to feel a little sore after a session. A big thing is learning how to take a hit, learning how to fall, so that in the process you don't get hurt. So everything's opened up here. If he steps back, he slides it off center so that it's um, at a 45 degrees pointed this way. It's easier to protect his center line and, and keep his organs safe. Curtis teaches more than just karate techniques. He teaches his students to be aware of their surroundings. We had a karate club at ASU. There was a rapist on campus and uh, one of the gals was attacked. An ASU student grabbed from behind and then forced to put up a fight in order to get away from her attacker. She kicked him in the head and ran and if so if it, I save one person paying attention to their environment, you know that's a plus because a, a criminal does not want, they want a victim. They don't want somebody that's paying attention. They want to get you when you least expect it and that's why I try to teach a lot of that stuff. It usually doesn't take very long to make an impression on a new student with a few simple self-defense tips. When they do the te basic technique where somebody grabs right here and you go, bam, bam, and then they start salivating, they're going, ooh. If you're a Scottsdale student and want to feel that sensation, you can join the club by calling Curtis at 480-423-6250. I'm Kevin Hunt for Inside Maricopa Sports. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Inside Maricopa Sports. For dates and times of our show, go to our website at maricopa.edu slash mctv. Check out our Facebook page for news and updates, and visit our YouTube channel for all of MCTV's original programming. So for our entire Inside Maricopa Sports team, I'm Ashley Neville. We'll see you next time. <laughs>